Hey folks, Turbine Guy coming back at you. Now today, the big news in the renewable energy world are all the frozen wind turbines down in West Texas. Evidently, they had a huge storm come through that was historic in nature for not only, only its low temperatures, but for also the high humidity there. Those two clashed, and as the uh, turbine stood there and the humidity to go across it, it would freeze and they iced all up. Got online and I got to the Austin American and found an article here that I'd like to talk about. Frozen wind turbines hamper Texas power output, states electrical grid operator says. And I guess they had to have rolling blackouts at one point in the night. But, you know, that's not very unusual for Texas. They have to do similar things like this in the summer when the air conditioning use is really high. So it's kind of a two-way street that, yeah, this isn't the best thing that happened, but Texas should be used to it by now. Well, a little bit of statistical speaking here. Texas has about 25,100 megawatts of wind power, of which about half of that, 12,000 megawatts, were down and frozen up. But the bonus that they talked about was that the turbines that were operating along the coastal area especially were spinning faster than normal due to, that, due to the higher wind speed than normal. So they were making up for some of the lost electricity of the ones that were down. That really is interesting because you'd think that they'd be ready for some of these to come and go, come and go. And, and I guess they just weren't. It must really have caught them off guard. Okay, now they're acting like these wind turbines going down in it historic storm is a big deal. I don't really see what the big deal is. Conventional power plants, nuclear power plants, gas, coal, all the different types of power plants all go down at some time or another, either for maintenance, for repair, or due to the weather. This is a weather-related downage. Well, down in Florida, when the hurricanes or storms are coming through, they shut the power plants down ahead of time. Okay, so a lot of this type of stuff normally occurs. It's something that we need to understand is there and there's redundancy in the grid. And Texas was able to pull a lot of power from other states and other areas, but it cost them more money. And that's kind of the big issue, I think. Now, it's awful ironic. I found this Facebook post here, and this guy's really kind of got a point, especially, you know, the renewable en or anti-renewable energy people. He states, a helicopter running on fossil fuel, spraying a chemical made from fossil fuels onto a wind turbine made with fossil fuels during an ice storm is awesome. And he's talking about, as you can see in the picture, the de-icing of the blades. Now, to me, especially in Texas, I think he would just shut the turbines down and wait until the ice melts off and then let them go. That kind of stuff's going to happen. That's why you crank up the backup plants a little more, the natural gas, the nuclear, whatever, to get you through it. But it's just awful interesting this guy had a point. But you know what this whole storm does and these rolling blackouts in Texas and, and other places tell you is now than ever, it's more important for you to get yourself off the grid, at least partially, to get your own solar and your own wind turbines and, and your own battery bank, like I have, so when things do go down, you can run the important things in your house. Now, to me, these high watt turbines that I represent aren't going to have this big icing up problem. You're not going to have any helicopters spraying chemicals out in the middle of nowhere to get them to run. The way they're designed, first of all, they're going to spin fast, Faster, faster than these by far, sometimes up to 800 RPM. So they're going to spin a lot of this water off before it really has a chance to freeze. And even if it does ice up a little bit, these turbines, the, the high bot micro wind turbines are made of aluminum where these big turbine blades are made of fiberglass. So the fiberglass isn't going to expand and contract nearly as much as the aluminum is. Okay, plus I would guess the ice would want to stick to the fiberglass a little bit more than would the aluminum. But that aluminum being a very expansive type metal is if it gets cold, it's going to contract and the ice is going to chunk off. Or if it gets warm, they're going to expand and the ice is going to ch chunk and melt off. So it's kind of a self-healing system where these big turbines, like we saw, definitely need the helicopter to clean it off if they don't want to wait. There you have it, folks. Talking about the frozen turbines down in Texas, it's not really such a big deal like they're saying. The, they should be used to this. They are in the summer. Power companies go down all the time. Power plants do. But if you want to take care of yourself, get your own little off-grid system, get yourself a high-vot turbine, and move forward. Turbine Guy, signing off.